In today's video, I'm covering five super important tips to improve your gun skill in Apex. All five of these tips will help you win more of your fights. So whether you play for kills or you play for wins, I got you covered in this video. Let's get into it. Tip number one, recoil smoothing. Now this technique is something that most players do, but only a few know how or why it works. It centers around the fact that in Apex, strafing can and will reduce your recoil, especially while you're ADSing. This was something that was always built into Apex, but more specifically was put in because Apex relies heavily on movement and gun skill. Some of you may be familiar with the fact that each gun has its own predictable recoil pattern, and the only ways this pattern gets easier to control is either A, mastering the recoil pattern, or B, learning how to implement recoil smoothing. Therefore, this will be rewarding players who can combine both gun skill and movement, or more specifically, strafing left to right. So in order to learn how to recoil smooth, you gotta move side to side at a specific pace while aiming down your sights to essentially remove any recoil from your weapon. If you're shaky with your movement, however, then you will still definitely experience recoil even as you're moving, but this is only if you're on mouse and keyboard. Controller players should always have recoil smoothing going on as long as you're strafing and ADSing within a seven meter range. Now opposite strafes will equal better recoil smoothing because you'll have more range on it. This is often known as mirroring. It's basically how it sounds. If I'm moving left and my opponent is moving right, tracking them becomes much easier. And I find this to apply even when hip firing too. Try to always focus on your target and keep them in the center of your screen whenever possible. This will help with your hand-eye coordination, but it will also be easier to follow their next steps. Now recoil smoothing will not apply when opponents are 70 plus meters away as there's bullet travel speed and the movement of an opponent's strafe is just too much to track at that range. This is why I'll see a lot of pros use jitter aiming, which I won't get into here in this video, but it is an advanced mouse and keyboard technique to minimize recoil at larger distances, often without moving themselves. Tip number two, using your abilities. Now using abilities to assist with your gunfights sounds super obvious on the surface, and sure, it kind of is, but in Apex abilities actually play a significant role in just about every fight you'll get into. Using your ability at the wrong time, or just flat out forgetting to use it, can have a detrimental effect on how the fight turns out. Now fights aren't usually dominated solely by abilities, but they do play like a 10-30% to 30 role in any given fight. Abilities in Apex tend to have nuance and complexities behind them that make this game so unique. They also have their own use cases. I'll give you some broad stroke examples of how you must be thinking about incorporating these abilities so that you can find more success in your fights. I'll break up all of the legends into their own classes and elaborate on how they should be utilized during your average fight. First off are mobility legends. Now you want to think about ways to close the gap to your opponent when you find an edge, something like cracking their armor and abruptly moving up on them. Sometimes this will mean navigating only you and other times it will assist your whole team. If it's just navigating you, for example like Pathfinder's Grapple, then be conscious of how far away you're moving from your teammates and how close you're getting to multiple opponents. You can also think about using movement abilities for rotations throughout the map or for retreating in a hectic fight that just isn't going your team's way. You'll often see sweaty players use mobility to be evasive and try to take less damage or to reposition quickly giving them an advantage. Mobility legends in Apex tend to pair well with aggressive players, but it can be a catch-22 here with your positioning at times because if your gun skill isn't there to back it up, you'll find yourself in some bad spots without your teammates' help. Moving on to Recon Legends. These legends are strictly centered around gathering more information for your team. These legends are really straightforward, they're meant to compensate for game sense, and sometimes overdoing it. This ultimately makes fighting against the legends like Bloodhound and Seer so annoying, especially if you've worked hard towards having an edge tactically or from your positioning standpoint. The amount of information you can get from these abilities is hefty, but it's also super valuable for your whole team because it ties into you guys making your next move. This is often why you'll see many teams running recon legends because the only real counter to this information is getting that information for your team as well. Next is support. Now support legends are made to assist in moments where you guys may be disadvantaged. Special revive animations, loot potential, and creating cover on the fly. Support players should always try to be in the back a little bit as to try to protect their life and not be the first ones to get knocked on the team. Remembering that your abilities are really meant for helping your teammates when they're in need is 
super important. Offensive slash defensive legends like Caustic, Gibby, Rampart, and many more are honestly really similar to the support role. You provide value in different ways, but it's important to remember when and where to be utilizing their utility. A Caustic ult, for example, at the right time and place should instantly give your squad the upper hand. Now, being reserved with legends who have a longer cooldown on their abilities like Gibraltar is vital to keep in mind, but more free-flowing legends like Mirage, who has much shorter cooldowns, will allow for more utility to be output. I mean, honestly, utility is everything when it really comes down to it in Apex. Master your legend or legends that you play and really seek to place yourself in the moments your legend has the most upside. If you guys are enjoying this video and want to help further support my channel, please consider dropping a super thanks. This is YouTube's newest feature, which allows you to tip me and get your comment highlighted below. Be sure to put any questions you want answered in your super thanks. And as always, this is by no means necessary, and I appreciate any and all of your guys' support. Thank you. Tip number three, learn to abuse cover. Now, this is the best way to get an edge in any fight and do so quickly. Some may be thinking, duh, use cover. But in this tip, I'm going to elaborate on some little details that most players overlook. All of these will help with the process of mastering your surroundings, which is crucial to becoming a great player in any FPS. First is what's known as the 50-50 rule, and it's where you want to try to strive to have 50% of your screen covered with some cover. But let's take this a bit further. You can learn to pivot on angles, say you're at a wall or a box or a tree. Being flexible with your positioning here allows for you to take micro adjustments in real time to avoid taking more damage. Always try to put yourself in a pivot if you feel like an enemy has some advantage over you. Some examples of this could be if you just knocked an enemy and your shield is cracked, but there's a second enemy close to you. You want to make sure you have a pivot here where you could potentially start a battery, use your vision to see if an enemy is approaching, and if so, decide do I cancel the heal and fight this second person, or do I shift around this cover further to help get this battery off in time. Another example could be as if you're outnumbered in a specific moment. It doesn't take long for you to die if more than one person is shooting you, so if you think you could potentially be in multiple lines of sight, then really consider your surroundings to find a pivot. If I feel like I'm being outnumbered, I try to position myself so that I can have an angle on one enemy, but so that their second teammate can't have an angle on me. So be unique to wherever you are on the map and obviously wherever your opponents are. But one key aspect to all of this, which most players overlook, is use any and all available cover accessible to you in that moment. You can think big, like a building or a door or a wall. But you can also think small, like a tiny rock, or a tree, or even your teammate's knockdown shield. Learning to remember that these pieces of cover are there actively within your battle will help you just naturally gravitate towards cover intuitively. The further you're straying away from this cover, the more likely it is that you'll be getting caught out and dying in some open space. But on the topic of utilizing cover, let's talk about tip number four, map awareness. Now map awareness is honestly such an underrated component to great players. Often during coaching sessions, I'm asked, how do I improve my map awareness? And ultimately there is a few things you can do, two of which are just watching players like you're doing right now on YouTube or playing for yourself. But some other ways to boost your map awareness are to be extremely mindful of where you are on the map and what the POI is called that you're in. Every time you walk into a new POI, it shows you what the name of it is in the top right hand corner of your screen. You can also refer to your map key or your mini map to see where exactly you're at and what this place is called. Having some familiarity within the POIs that you're in will help you remember important spots that are valuable to be in within that POI. Now, once you become fairly familiar with the POIs on the map, you wanna be thinking about past experiences of where you noticed that specific part of the map you were in was not favorable to you. Maybe it was a heavy choke point where your team lost a fight in, or maybe you realize that the specific area you're in has some extreme low ground and the alternate side has some high ground over you. Simple and basic features of the map should last in your memory about what's a good spot to be in and what's a bad or vulnerable spot to be in. I think you need to have a decent memory in order to increase your map awareness, but ultimately experience will play the biggest role here. Tip number five, healing. Overhealing and underhealing are a common problem for many players. Now, overhealing means you're spending too much time healing minimal amounts of HP or shield when you really should be fighting with your teammates. And underhealing is when you're not healing during the moments of downtime within each fight. I can honestly tell you, from my vast experience coaching players in Apex, underhealing is a much more common problem. 
players often don't realize that they have more time than they think they do. That extra three seconds to put on another shield cell could be the difference maker in that fight. And I'll be honest here, this whole thing has so much nuance attached to it, there's really no one size fits all rule here. Like you could put on that extra cell one time and it's totally the right thing to do, but the next time you're late to the fight only by a few seconds, but those few seconds were when your two teammates were getting ganged up on by all three enemies. It just has so many variables to factor in each and every time, but as a general principle, always try Try to be healing. Out of all of my coaching sessions, rarely do I see players who overheal. There's not a moment generally where I'm like, ah, oh, instead of healing there, you should have been fighting. Because honestly, I feel like overhealing applies more to the higher elo. Why? Well, teams work so well together up there, and they're more accurate with their aim, they're more coordinated as a team, and this ultimately speeds up how quick the fight goes on. So, as you go into your next game, just keep in mind how long each heal takes to put on, and focus on the number of enemies actively within the fight. Now, speaking of coaching, if you're interested in upping your game, check out the link below to my coaching website. And if you're interested in one simple tip for each legend, I suggest you check out this video next. Thanks for watching. Peace.